Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to change the brake pads on my sister's car. It's a 2008 Chevy Impala. Uh, brakes are something that's not hard to do. Uh, pretty much anybody can do it themselves in their driveway. All, all you need is uh, a jack. Jack stands for safety. Um, you need, on this particular car, a half inch socket, some kind of clamp, and a tire iron. Now for this video, I'm going to use the lift and a pneumatic impact wrench just for convenience. But that's all you need, and it's actually a simple process, so I'm going to show you guys that right now. I went ahead and loosened up all the lug nuts. That's your first step. Don't lose your lug nuts. All you do is pick the tire up. It's not that heavy. Move it out of the way. Now is a good opportunity to clean, break dust and stuff like that out. You can also use it as a chair if you need to. Alright, before you take anything off of the brakes, you want to remove the cap off the reservoir. And that's right up here. And it's generally located there on pretty much all vehicles. But just take the cap off and don't forget to put that back on later. What you're going to do is you're going to notice this fluid level is going to rise. So if it's full, you might want to suck some of that out with a, like a turkey baster or something like that. Um, especially if you're doing it in the driveway or something. Alright, from this point... You grab your half inch wrench and just a rundown of the process of what I'm going to do. There's a, a bolt here that goes all the way through and then there's a bolt down here that goes all the way through. And that holds this whole caliper on. And you'll see once I take those bolts out, I'll be able to take this whole caliper off. And then there's a piston right here that after I take the pads off, I'll compress, put the new, shoe, new uh, brake shoes, brake pads on there. Slap it all back together, tighten those two bolts down, put the wheel back on, done. You just gotta do that four times. So I was wrong on this car. They don't go all the way through. They just go enough in there to grab. That's okay. So these are the pads. That one... Yeah, that one's shot. There's no padding material left on that one. Sometimes it helps to have a little screwdriver to get this out. Now see that one? That one's still got some material on it. Which is deceptive because when you look through the, the rim of the tire you can see this pad so it looks like I, I've had this happen on a bunch of cars it looks like it's fine but you can't see this back one which sometimes wears a lot faster the 
there's that. That's taken apart. It's helpful to have some brake part cleaner. Not required, but helpful. You want to take your clamp and you're going to compress these two cylinders. You guys will have to excuse the fan, it's only 100 degrees. You want to move these back until they're they're flush with that. Now, like I said, when you do that, your level inside of your reservoir is going to rise. Sometimes these bottom out, like that one just bottomed out. So you don't have to force it. Well, some cars are harder than others. This one's actually pretty easy. Alright, if my lovely assistant would go and get the new brake pads. They're on the table over there. Right there on the end. Built to last, dura last. Now if you go to the parts store, they'll look up your car and actually tell you what, what all you need. <coughs> and sometimes they also come with these uh, clips. You don't always have to replace those, but it doesn't hurt. And actually, you know what, for this car, since the clips stayed on there, I'm just going to verify that they're the same. And if they're the same, I'm going to leave those old clips on there. Get out of there. So yeah, they're, they're the exact same. Well, I'll tell you what. For the sake of the video, we'll change them. That's it. You take one out. Put it in the right way, and then just push it back down. For the sake of the video. Now some pads 
the inside and the outside pad are different. <clears throat> See, for instance, those. You've got two with the tab on this side and two with the tab on that side. So that means that one of each goes on each tire. Now, let me show you this. Well, this is the pad that was on the back. No, this is this is the pad that was on the back. So look at the, the difference between a new set of pads, how much wear that has. See that? So putting the new pads on is as simple as sliding them into the groove, which I'll show you on the front one, you'll be able to see better. If I can get this one in. Doing it blind. I'll tell you what, then let's do the first one. Dang. So in this Impala, both of these, once the pads are on, both of these clips are facing up, at least on the front driver's side. There you go. Now if you compressed your cylinders enough, theoretically, which, see that one came out, so I'm going to have to compress that one again. <clears throat> it's all hydraulic pressure, so. Um, another option you can do to get them the same is you take a small piece of wood Two by four, anything like that will work. And you put a piece of wood where it spans both of those. Voila. Now you want to be careful. This is this is rubber hose here, so you want to be careful not to kink it or break it. You just slide. Sometimes it, it takes a little finagling with new pads, but basically just push them together and you work it till you get the caliper back on. Now, this right here, something to take note of as well. This right here, as it wears, this will move. Um, it just kind of floats in there. So make sure you push that in. To make sure it lines up where, where it's supposed to. Because see, this whole thing moves and compresses. And that's it. You put your bolts back in. Throw a clip across the floor. Tighten these back up to manufacturer specs.
That's about right. Actually, technically supposed to use a torque wrench, and they have it in the manual, but you just get it pretty, pretty tight. I mean, just pay attention when how tight it was when you took it off, and when you tighten it up, just tighten it up a little bit more than that. So that's it for changing brake pads. Just repeat that four times. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do the back one, and I'm going to show you the difference between the front and the back because the back has uh, the parking brake and the rotor's different. All right, we move to the back tire. I've already loosened up the lug nuts on here. Um, one thing I didn't mention, and you'll have to pardon the fan, like I said, it's hot. Um, one thing I didn't mention is you need to inspect your rotors whenever you take, anytime you ever take your wheel off. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. You want to inspect your rotors and make sure that there's no deep grooves and gouges. So you want to actually take your, your, your fingernail and you want to run it against that and it should be and you want to check it in a few places but you want that to be smooth you should be able to feel that now you can tell down here where the the pad goes that there's a little lip um, also whenever you get that off you want to go around this shield it just goes all the way around you have to feel where the pads go but you want to feel the back side of this too and uh, make sure there's not any deep gouges or anything like that if there is then you have to replace the rotor um, the rotor here on the back is a little different it takes a smaller pad than up front because inside of here is actually your your parking brake um, which is actually like the older uh, drum brakes so whenever you put on your parking brakes it's got shoes in there that push outward and that's what holds it into place so we're gonna go ahead and knock this one out on camera and then I'll do the other side of the car off camera because it's, it's just it's basically the same process four times that's it Actually, on here, it's a different size. All right, well, I'm gonna have to go up a size. See, these were longer that's what I was expecting on the front you know different cars are different but the process for at least disc brakes is, is pretty much the same on all of them See, the back ones weren't too bad. They actually still had some life in them.
Come on, gloves, cooperate. Got to pay attention to these little tabs. One way you can tell, see one of them has a tab, the other one doesn't. This one has that hole, that's where that piston was pushing against the back. So you can always tell that's the back pad. So this one actually needs to go like that, back there. Oops. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. I was wrong. It goes like that. Make sure you don't tear these boots. And that's it, we tighten it up. Now this is still loose, it's still gonna float until we initially, well, we, when we do our finishing uh, procedure, which I'll go over in just a second. Let me go ahead and tighten these back up. Alright, once you're done, after you put the tire back on, you've done all four tires, you're going to go inside the car, start it up, add fluid, if, if add brake fluid to the reservoir, go ahead and top it off. You're going to pump your brakes, you know, five, ten, a dozen times. Frog. You're gonna pump your brakes about a dozen times. Just push them to the floor, let them go, push them to the floor, let them go, push them to the floor. Um, then check your fluid again, top it off. And then that's it. If you just changed the brake pads, that's all you gotta do, you're good to go. Um, obviously test drive your car uh, in the yard, make sure your brakes work like they're supposed to. Um, 
and yeah that's pretty much it now there is an ad additional uh, procedure if you go if you remove the rotor here and you have to replace the shoes or something like that like you're doing drum brakes um, you know you, you have to back up and hit your brakes and back up and hit your brakes a few times this that sets a, a little screw thing in, inside of here to, to tension those but that's all you got to do for, for these and then that will go away um, as soon as you hit the brakes my turn all right so we got all four done didn't record them all because like i said it's pretty much the same for all four when you're done don't forget pump your brakes about a dozen times uh check your fluid make sure you top off your your brake fluid and then uh take it out in the yard or the driveway and test it out make sure your brakes work and that's it simple job doesn't take that long uh the more you do it the quicker you get at it uh, i know people that can do their brakes in an hour um, so i hope you enjoyed the video we'll see you next time if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs>